Hey everyone. Here I am. I'm at home. And look, there's Mr. I'm so scared. I don't know what I'm doing with myself. Good boy. He's usually all right under there. <laughs> but getting him under there right now is proving problematic as well. Yeah, we're gonna do some binding. So we're gonna show you how to bind unusual angles. We've never really talked about weird angles and we've never really talked about uh, sewing and binding together. What I've done here is I faked up a corner for you. That's almost always on a like on a table runner. You know, it's got that nice 45 degree point on one end. Well, that leaves kind of an angle over here that you've never dealt with. And it leaves an angle over here you've never dealt with. And then <laughs> the, uh, Don challenged me, or maybe it was Leah, I'm not sure which. But the challenge was to do a inside corner for you. We used a, a fuzzier batting today. For this, uh, it's uh, Hobbs Poly Cotton that we carry, so it's a it's a little thicker and puffy than puffier than some. So usually, what I do, and I'm not sure if it's all that visible in the camera, but uh, yeah, I guess it is. See how thick it is here versus here. So I slam down puffy edges, and if I'm doing a flannel quilt, I also push down the edges. If I'm in a hurry, I use the multi-step zigzag. So you can see that there's many stitches there. Uh, and on your machine, it ooh, let's get a, there we go. You see it shows uh, three, three stitches per side versus your regular zigzag, which, oh, let's push that on the screen. You know, it just goes one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way down. So instead, uh, on my machine, it's a four. Um, I think sometimes it's also a 16. Yeah, 16 is another one. Oops, sorry about that. There we go. Three to a side. Uh, you don't need it super wide, maybe five. And then it can be a longer or shorter, depending how flat you want things. But I like that one because it doesn't pucker got these crazy weird angles squared off now I've got some pretty little binding and in my other video I talk about size I always use two and a half inch wide binding no matter what the pattern says some smaller things they say oh we're gonna use two and a quarter um, yeah that's not always a great size for me all right, so the first two and a half inch I put uh, straight up. So I don't cut all the selvage off to begin. And you can see I'm just laying these together in a right angle. That's how I do it. And I don't mark. You are very welcome to mark. Um, if you were going to mark these, what I would suggest is uh, you put a little pin up there, maybe another pin down here, and then you would take a ruler and a pen and you would mark through here. So essentially you make the angles, you put the bulk of the binding to the left of the needle and we go here now where those two meet up here right in that little valley i'm going to put the needle right there right where they join and i'm going to use regular old straight stitch so oh look <laughs> finally got rid of the scared whiny dog and mouse is here mouse what are you doing you can't help <laughs> bugger off <laughs> <laughs> All right, so got. I'm gonna put the needle right down where the those two meet, and then on my Bernina table down here, 
I have all these beautiful lines and this one here is the center. That's where the needle is. So then I take the opposite V here and I put it right on that line, which is straight out then from the needle. And I just sew slow and steady, not too crazy. So I'm going to keep this mark on the zero, the needle center, and I'm just going to let this feed through. Not over steering or over driving it. Take out those pins as I get there. And then a couple things. If I'm doing a big long one, I don't take them apart. There we go. So do all of those. We can take these um, and cut them. Hopefully, hopefully you can see this. So lots of times if I'm gonna use scissors for these, I would go st straight out see that then I turn this and then I'll trim it at roughly a quarter inch and then when I get to this end I will turn and cut this Oops, sorry and what that does is it takes off the point on the top and the point off the bottom and then when I open this there's no little dog ears sticking out on the ends And you can take them over to the rotary cutter, cut them on the table at a quarter inch if you want. I'm doing this with ugly black thread, so I'm hoping that it's nice and easy for you to see on the camera. So, here we go. Clip, clip. And let's take a quick trip to the ironing board. And then I'm just going to fold this in half. The tricky thing is not to stretch this as you go. You can um, press the join open or to the side. Uh, I personally prefer open. And I usually wait till I get there. And as that comes into your view, I'll press this open. So we're back at the machine here and now I'm going to try to bind that odd angle which is not your typical quilt corner and that angle which is not your typical angle, not your regular corner but certainly this is what you would find on a table runner quite often. So let's see if we can pull this off for you. If you, like I said, during joining, if you want to mark them, by all means, if you own a brother with a, a laser, now's the time to pull that out and learn how to use it. So, magic of television here. I'm going to put the binding on the edge here. Switch to my straight stitch. So... People always ask me what the measurement is. As I say in the other video, my ma magic measurement is from the needle on this foot to the uh, outside of the black toe to the inside of the silver toe there. And I always do two and a half inch binding no matter what the instructions say because I know how to do it very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew towards the end, that corner. And it's a, it, the first one's always a little hard, but I'm going to pivot here. And I think I might have got it correct. Uh, I'm going to just fold the binding out of the way. Oh, I need one more stitch. 
let's see if I can point out why I think I need one more stitch. Okay, like I said, um, I like the edge of the binding on the outside of this black foot here, on the inside of the silver here, and you can see I'm a, just like one needle position shy. So I'm going to flip that back around. So I'm going back to straight on and I'm going to do one more stitch. Then I'm going to turn. And so just so you can see what I'm hoping for. Yeah, it's a little shy, but foot, edge, silver, right there. That's exactly where I want that edge to be. So, and then what I normally do is I'll reverse off the edge of the quilt here. So I'm just going to go straight back. You see that crazy looking angle? Yeah, that's right. That's the one I want. Zoom you out a little less. Then what we normally do, I just flip and push it back in. I'm actually going to pull it right out for you. What I want to do now is I'm going to fold the binding straight back, even with this edge. So I'm going to have it just fold back on that same angle in a straight line. Does that make sense? So you see that? So then what we want to do is fold the binding forward and you'll catch this in the other video. Um, and I want it even with this edge here. And if I'm wrong, I'll correct in the next one. Let me see. Maybe it, oops, sorry. I think I lied to you. We want this fold nice here. And I want a nice straight fold here. And I'm changing my tune. I'm saying not actually the raw edge up here but the point of the corner right there. Let's test it because if I'm wrong, and this is what you would do at home when you get a really weird angle, you're going to test it. You're going to see what you got. So I would sew back onto my binding this way and I'm going to take it out and we're going to look. So if I was to bring this over here, this side first, does it come all the way over? And then this side here. And then do I have a fold on each side? Yeah. I think it's just a little long, so I'm going to pop it out. felt like I went one I had one too many stitches in there and unfortunately in a binding in a tiny little corner like that one stitch is one stitch too many it is too many so I'm gonna turn again I'm gonna do that straight here I'm gonna fold it and then when I bring it forward I'm gonna bring it forward just a little more I'll give you a close up here it's going to seem really weird, but on the tip right here, where the point is around the corner there, there's, there's almost nothing here. There's no fabric, hardly a pleat at all. And then straight. You have to follow the angle, and in the video where I do the 90 degree traditional corners, it makes a little more sense. So, we're going to go all the way to this corner, which actually is a little more sensible. Feels like a 90, but it's actually a 45. 
and I'm going to turn and then I'm what I'm looking for is this line is in line with the edge of the back of the quilt there and then I'm going to stitch off and then normally what I do is I just pull it forward a little bit and then you flip the binding straight back in line with this line and then if it folds here and that fold ends right in the corner and this time we've got a 45 not a 90 but you can almost treat it like a 90 and then get that tail out of your way once I folded it I push it back in at the needle and I never un I never cut the thread there and there's a bit of tail of thread hanging out here it's okay So now I'm going to do this corner from the opposite direction. So you kind of have to guess where you're ending. And I think I need one more stitch there. If not, we'll pick it out. So I'm pretty happy that this edge of the quilt is in line with the edge of the foot that I, I'm measuring from. And it's no real measurement. It's just something that I figured out over time. Okay, so you pull this up and straight back and you see this angle here matches the odd angle here. When we pull this forward, remember, we're going to fold it to the corner here and there's hardly any fabric in that pleat there. And I think that'll be right. All right, so then I'm going to bring this side down first and you see where the bulk, the fold is here and the bulk is over there on this side? On this side, see we've got that kind of crazy weird angle here. That's correct to the angle we're binding to. Then when you bring this side over, you're looking for the fold to kind of make a nice angle here. But see on this side now, the bulk is on the left. And on this side, the bulk is on the right. And then the pattern's gonna, it makes it look a little skewed, but uh, you see how lovely that would be? That corner? So we can't, we have to make the angles the, the way they are. Um, do go ahead and watch the other video. We've got it loaded to Facebook and YouTube. So I'm gonna bring this over on this side. Bulk is on the right, then I'm going to bring this over, and sometimes you have to widget this just a little bit, but you're going to bring it and muddle and oops, muddle and fold it till you have a nice angle from the point to the inside point of the binding here, and they would meet there. And then you have there, so I've got it pinned. You can see now it's going to hold that nice tip. So see, we've got a reasonably pointy point of that 45 degree angle, not the 90. So see how there's a nice line from the point to the inside of the binding? And then see, I've got that corner is lovely and matches that, I don't know what angle that is. And then I'll show you on the other side. And I, I sew my backing, I, pardon me, I sew my binding to the back of my quilt and I bring it to the forward. Yeah, Gail's Northwest, I'm Southwest. It's weird all over and then I would stitch this by machine. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch back to that multi-step zigzag. And I'm going to make us a nice inside corner. So we're going to pretend this is the inside of my binding. All right, so we have this. 
it's going to be quite exciting to get around this. But I'm going to show you a couple, well, this way, this is an easy way to do it. Uh, I got my zigzag plate on. Yes, I do. I'm going to put myself in a straight stitch. I'm going to put my machine where I would normally be sewing the binding on, and I'm going to move my needle one position to the right, and I'm going to just do the inside of this corner. So getting this edge lined up where I like it, and then I'm just going to go there. And you can you can go if you had like a quilt that goes in and out and in and out. I this is like a, in sewing referred to as a stay stitch. Um, you could just go do an inch before and an inch after each corner. You don't have to go down the whole side of the quilt if you don't want to. And then you're going to just cut straight into that point. So that it does this. Ooh, so scary. Don't worry. I'm going to start my binding out there. I'm going to put it back into needle center position. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can cut it like I did. And when you get to this corner, you can turn this and um, some people turn this and pull this all nice and flat out here and try to go. That's scary. So instead, I've pre-clipped that. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to straighten the quilt. And it gets all weird and bunchy on the left here. You can see there's a big pleat. And then you carry on by here as if nothing is amiss. That's a really scary thing for a quilter. In sewing, it happens all the time when you have a V-neck blouse with a facing. You end up doing that fancy little jig there. So, some people would also keep this flat, fold this over, and you're going to go straight across. And then what happens is it will fold, it'll nestle itself back, which I'm going to sew this one for you. Okay, so... Wherever I start, I'm gonna I fold it over, move it into my machine, put my straight stitch down there. So then you're just gonna sew in that edge there. Let's see. I'm gonna try a little. Oh, I'm gonna try a little zoom. There we go. So I'm gonna keep this straight. The really tricky, scary part for everyone is what happens up here. So you can not pull it straight or you can pull it straight in advance it doesn't matter the trick is to make sure that you have the binding all the way over where it belongs and there's a big old pleat over here and you let it pleat under the foot but not under the needle It's something we've been doing for years in clothing, and it's not really a weak point unless you cut past it. Um, if you're freaked out, you can go in and um, fray check those little corners and let them dry and then bind them tomorrow. So now the problem with this is it wants to stay this way for a little bit. It's kind of got that little muscle memory going on there. So you're going to force it. And let it do its little thing. So it kind of will have its own little uh, nestle here. All right. So and then 
it kind of finds its own little way and settles down. You can absolutely hand stitch any of these bindings. I just happened to um, have been a trained seamstress and we've done all of our bindings by machine. And once you get good at it, you're it, they're awesome. Um, and I'll show you, that's the front. And so what happens in the back, um, if I can feel it with my stiletto, that's just thread there. If I had blue thread in that or thread that matched the quilting, that would hide and see how it's what we call in the ditch. Now, some people might take this and, and put a little tack stitch in there to help it hold it. But I'm telling you that the weight of its own self, it will lay that way and be quite happy. And so in the time it takes me to machine sew these, you might have gone a couple inches by hand. Not that there's anything with that. You don't see this at all if you use, I used black so you guys can absolutely see where I've been and what I've been, what I'm, hopefully the stitches I'm showing you. The problem with binding on the bias, if you're not experienced with bias binding, it actually go, people tend to stretch it and bad things ensue. Um, this will lay the same way, whether it was bias binding or straight grain binding. And if I'm just doing straight edges, like these are straight edges, it's not a curve. If it was a curve, like a scallop, I would have had to use bias binding. If you've got a rolling scallop, which has a, a high hill and a low hill, those are a little different than a scallop that goes in and out, you know, up and down. Uh, the inside points are a bit of fun. The the rolling in and out, different technique than the boink, boink, boink. So, I'm sorry, boink, such a technical term. I hope you're all following. <laughs> so, uh, bias binding, if you have curves. And even if you have mostly straight and then you have a curve, you got to do bias binding. But on straight, edge quilts. I only use straight edge binding. It's just um, the average sewer hasn't had enough experience to have a successful bias binding experience. They tend to tug and pull too much. And uh, before we had such great starch alternatives, uh, people didn't starch it and uh, it went on quite nasty and it would have lots of weird little rippling in it. And if they stretched it enough, the quilt would curl all sorts of fun stuff would ensue so anyway again uh, especially with wherever you are north south east west <laughs> be safe be calm and we'll see you tomorrow uh tune back in for leah <laughs> thanks